You're such an asshole. Oh, crippled, injured, Clary. Shiny, happy people. Remember the 90s? You could forget it because nothing good happened there. The 90s, man, that 90s music sucked. There, there, was, there was some okay music in the 90s, but it was fringe, revolting cock, industrial, like, hardcore uh, ministry. <coughs> KMFDM. Guar, if any of you remember that. The shiny oh, Stone Temple Pilots, man, you listen to them? Yeah, I can't tell the difference between them and Smashing Pumpkins and Nirvana. Wait, you could tell Nirvana because Nirvana really fucking sucked. Nirvana was like the Pink Floyd of the Gen Xers. Like, yeah, man, but it's different. It's not like the long hair band, man. And, yeah, there has been good music since probably the jazz of, the, I'd say, the Miles Davis, even getting into the early 70s. <clears throat> the Vince Heraldi. Somewhere we're here to talk about. I just went on that. I'm tired, I'm crippled, I'm injured, and I get to go the fuck home today, which is awesome. Hi, Aaron. Hope you are well. I wanted to get your thoughts and opinions on the book by Alexander Shenitsyn called The Ar Gulag Archipelago. If you're not familiar, it is a novel he wrote in, that details the Soviet Union's forced labor camps from 1918 to 1956 <clears throat> and includes stories from Schultz and Nietzsche's uh, personal experience and others he met at the camps. I bring this up because I have been watching several videos from Jordan Peterson, ah, the latecomer, Sheriff Peterson. I'll get my gun, finally shoot back at those liberals and act a day. Oh, hang on, I got put a bullet in my revolver. Patu, oh my god, I'm famous, I'm a hero, Patreon me. I showed up. I'm just, I'm just like wholly unimpressed with the man. He's smart, don't get me wrong, he's a brilliant man, he is smart, he did take courage, but it's like, dude, 2017, not to sound current eerie, but like, really? It took your almost 70 year old ass to finally take a stand in with that. He does have good videos. You should listen to Jordan Peterson. I listened to one of them. It took forever. Um, it was a hike. And uh, I'm like, oh, this is a two-hour video from Jordan Peterson. I'm like, yeah, you could have shrunk that down into 15 minutes. All right, enough slamming on Dr. Peterson. He's a good man. I just wish he'd draw faster. Patoo, I fought against the academia and left this communist onslaught. You see what I did? Pay me! All right, I bring this up because I've been watching several videos from Dr. Jordan Peterson where he claims that this is one of the most, most influential books of the 20th century because according to Peterson, the novel, quote, completely discredited the Soviet Union. Prior to watching the videos, I had never heard of the book, much less the Gulag system. My question is, what are your thoughts and opinions on the Gulag system itself? The Gulag Archipelago book, Jordan's claims, and do you think it would even be possible for something like this to occur again? Also, do you think this is even a relevant question in this day and age. So this was a very lighthearted question. <clears throat> so I had to char uh, charge him a fair amount. I had to do some research because I have not read the Gulag Archipelago. It's 2,100 pages. It's three separate books. And if I recall, Dr. Peter, I had to watch some videos. He says it's 7.5 font. I'm like, fuck that. So I did do some research, got the Cliff Notes version, watched some Dr. Jordan Peterson. Purdue, I'm a hero. I watched him. <clears throat> and put together my response here so with these notes. All right, let us go through each question here. Uh, my question is, what are your thoughts and opinions on the Gulag system itself? All right, obviously it's evil. Um, as much as I and many other right-wingers would like to say, let's just round up all the people from California and put them in a concentration camp, we actually would not do that. <clears throat> it, we have a line, we have a morality to us, we could not, I don't think, I mean, I, I, you know, oh man, wouldn't it be great to go and just shoot a bunch of leftists? Well, yeah, until it comes to the actual killing time. And then you're like, uh, and what I think, uh, the difference, the morality difference between, say, a right and a left, is the rightists would kind of just leave the leftists alone and let them to their own devices. Like, you won't survive without us, you need a parasite off of us, and we just don't care about you. <clears throat> the leftists, and you're going to find out why as I go into this, they need rightists. They need a parasite off of rightists. They need a parasite off of the producers. It is a producer parasite. You don't even have to go left or right. 
it is a, a lamprey leech host uh, kind of relationship, but it's disgusting. And it's disgusting for many reasons. So, here are the reasons why, I mean, you, you know, what, what did I think about the Kool-Aid system? It sucks, slavery sucks, slave labor sucks, it's immoral, it's unethical, it's not right, it's, I mean, so that's, you know, I went to a, I went to a restaurant in Vegas here last night, and it, it's kind of like, well, duh. Uh, and I'm not joking, they had a sign, CEOs against cancer. And I wanted to walk in on this, people say, really? Fucking really? Wow, take a stand, guys. CEOs against cancer, holy fucking shit. Your balls must be the size of bowling balls. But they weren't there, because I was, that pissed me off. So, <clears throat> it's kind of the same thing. Well, yeah, who's gonna be for slave labor deep down inside your heart, except leftists who hate, envy, want to destroy, want to live off of, just have contempt for people who aren't leftists who don't believe in the religion. So on, on the whole, it's bad. So let's go into the details. All right, one, <clears throat> um, this is a reality of communism. This is a consequence of communism. And in pretty much every communist system, there has been some kind of slave labor. Um, what I found interesting in doing the research for this is that the Soviet Union, I didn't know this, you know, the Soviets, oh, our economic system is better, and they always would produce economic reports and learn they were fabricated. But they don't tell you that a lot of the infrastructure projects were contingent on slave labor. It's like Hitler, no different, where, I mean, you watch some documentaries, concrete, look into the, the, the world of concrete in Nazi Germany. And you find out just how much resources were consumed to build bunkers, to build underground trains, all this other shit that Hitler wanted. And the only way you got it was through conscripted, uh, conscripted slave, uh, Arbeit Mach Frei concentration camp labor. So the Soviet Union had kind of the same thing. Now, this wasn't like they were building it up in Moscow, the Gulag Archipelago, they called that because there were separate <coughs> uh, prison camps, like an archipelago of islands that were removed from the rest of society. But it was, it's kind of funny, uh, right off the bat, it's a testament that the communist economic system can't work without slave labor. And then you see this in other places to varying degrees. North Korea also has slave labor camps. Uh, China, slave labor. Uh, and one could even argue today that they have it uh, in a quasi-capitalist kind of way. Uh, but then there was also, say, Cambodia, Pol Pot. Where, and this also happened in other countries where, <clears throat> alright, we're going to get rid of people out of the cities and you're going to go work in the fields. You bourgeoisie asses with your sunglasses, or not sunglasses, regular glasses, uh, you're going to go work in the fields. So there was this forced labor <clears throat> of varying degrees. Concentration camp level, abuse, death, working in just horrible conditions like the Gulag Archipelago. And then, hey, we're all going to work. You're an engineer, go work in the field. You're that, you're going to work in the field. You're it, go work in the field. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an admission, the, the, the communists won't ever admit it because they're, they're ideologues, they're, they're religious zealots, uh, that the communist system doesn't work. You need slave labor. And I'm kind of curious what's going on in that, I say most because I'm really curious to watch Venezuela. Like, when, when are they going to start coming up with, you got to work in the country, and you know, what was it? Was it, we got to give up to it? No, it wasn't to it. There's some... You start seeing this, it's good for the country, volunteer your labor, which is slavery. Uh, maybe not for slavery at the end of a gun where there was uh, charges, false or not, that you were accused of and charged with and then forced into a miserable concentration. Or, hey, you know what, let's go work in the fields and make some bread, you know, and, and, which is also slave labor. Um, but I, in any case, the the gulag or prison camps or work camps or forced labor no matter how benign that is a sign and an admission from the communists that yeah our, our economy sucks and we got to force people to work they're not willingly going to work so that's one thing um, it's also a testament to that communism is anti-freedom uh, if you look at how they would get people, it, it, it was a narc system, it was like the Stasi, well, it was the Stasi, it was basically the Soviet version of East Germany, where one in three people in East Germany were informants, and what ends up coming, you get a witch hunt, where it's like, oh, okay, that person has a slightly nicer flat, this person has a slightly hotter wife, I'm going to narc on them and say they were saying non-communist thoughts, 
And now they go and they get accused of whatever, they'd make it up, they come in with their jack boots late at night and they grab you and whisk you off. And oh yeah, there'd be a trial, but it wasn't fair. Um, but the larger point is that if you can't disagree with your government, much as I hate the NFL players, much as I think the NFL uh, as an entity is a piece of fucking, con not communist, but just a piece of worthless filth and crap, those players have every right to go and protest and take a knee. Absolutely, go and do it. I'm not going to watch you. i got the freedom not to watch you. Um, but in communism, pretty much everywhere, you are not, you don't have freedom. You are to serve the state. You And then when you say, well, what is the state? The state is a bunch of lazy, slothful, egomaniacs. <clears throat> Take a look at liberal arts. It's not a surprise that Khmer Rouge was predominantly uh, teachers uh, that thought they knew better. These are lazy fucks who want to be in command and control. Hillary Clinton, perfect example. Not necessarily communist, but they don't give a shit about the people. They don't give a shit about you guys. They want an easy life. They want to be in command. They want to be in control. And they want to be rich without actually having to work. And if you violate that doctrine, if you violate the, the, the leftist religion uh, that they pass on, you are punished. And, and today you can say that kind of happens. Oh, you're, you demand, you start telling single moms to stop breeding? Oh, you must be sexist. You tell blacks and Hispanics, hey, knock it off with the fucking breeding out more than what you can afford. Oh, you must be racist. Hey, uh, telling women stop majoring in stupid shit. I mean, all this would actually help these people. Never mind that you actually are a good person trying to help them, telling them the truth, because that takes balls. Um, <clears throat> telling women to stop majoring in stupid leftist liberal arts bullshit. Oh my God, you're sexist. Um, you get punished. Now, today, punished means doxxed, socially ostracized, politically ostracized. Um, it, it's not like you're sent off to a camp. Uh, but there is some element of that. But still, in common, you do not have any freedom. None. You don't have the right to property. That's written in there. There's no property. There's no private ownership of anything. <clears throat> the Kulaks, not to be confused with Gulags, Kulaks were these semi-quasi, somewhat successful farmers. Uh, and they were <laughs> dragged off and killed a lot of times or just sent to the prison camps because you rat bastards had more grain or were better at your job than I. Um, no, communism is just inferior people who want to live off of the produ producers. But not just that. They, I mean, that's one thing to just be an economic person. But these guys are egomaniacs. They cannot stand the fact that there are better people than them. And so it, it isn't just, well, I'm going to live off of you like a welfare bum and collect my check and shut the fuck up and go home. No, they need to be like social justice warriors. They need an ego fix. They need a crusade. And so you got, you know... Lenin, oh, we're gonna rise. And I'm a, I mean, you look at every communist leader Mao Zedong, Marx, Lenin, Stalin, they all came from rich, privileged backgrounds because they were spoiled little pussy brats. That's what they were. Eagle Mangan acts, but they were pussy little, soft, just the, the most pathetic, parasitic, worthless, spoiled brat vermin there ever was. Um, anyway, and if you get in their way and you don't believe, you don't toe the line, and you're not politically correct. Punishment, send you off to the go. So you you have no rights, none. You're not a free people. Your life is lived for the state. You are at at minimum a slave <clears throat> to the state. And they might grant you a little bit of freedoms, but you better say the right thing. And so that's that's another thing is is just how it was wantonly used to punish people and political enemies. Who the great one of the greater things, one of the awesome things was how Schultzenitzen would talk about how these people would be brought in because they dared to voice an opinion uh, into the gulag system. Well, what they really loved is when, remember, leftists will eat their own. They will, because they are egomaniacs above it all. And look at, look at what they did to Bernie Sanders. They threw him under the bus because they wanted their, Hillary Clinton wanted to be president. Fuck you people, fuck whether or not you deserved a better president. Fuck whether the Democrats out there, all your Democrat voters, you know, the Freedom Party of Freedom and all that. Uh, fuck you, you don't, you're going to get Hillary Clinton and not Bernie Sanders, which is what I think most of you want. <clears throat> um, where was I going with that? Um, oh, shit. In, in any case, oh, that's what it was. So, when, when the leftists turn on each other, and they will, because there's not enough economic production for all of you to be senators, advice reserve, diversity counselor, assistant directors over at your academias and universities, especially when money's going to go away. You can't all be nonprofit CEOs. Uh, when, when that money goes away, they will turn on each other. What Solzhenitsyn found was really funny is they get these true believers, these true communists, who would 
step on somebody's foot, cross the wrong person, just look the wrong, or have something that these pathetic, inferior people, known as socialists, known as leftists, known as communists, simply wanted. And they would narc on this guy or make up some fabricated thing, and then they thought there was a mistake. There's a mistake? I'm a, I'm a devout communist. I've, I've championed the party. And they love that the most because of the, the mental, like, and they would even challenge him, like, you see the economic reports coming out about, you know, like, uh, do, you, do you look at how much, you know, the starvation, all these people dying? Do you still believe in that? And even though that they were <clears throat> imprisoned unfairly by the communist system, that they could not line up to choke on the dick enough. Uh, they, they couldn't pull, oh, there's something wrong. I'm a devout communist. I, 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 I paid a penance. I, I, I paid a, an indulgence. I, I'm forgiven. And it didn't matter because at the end, no matter what left this poppycock religious bullshit they throw up, in the end, it's just evil, lazy fucks who don't want to work for a living. That's all communism is. And so even your most devout, hardcore believers, you know, and you get, again, you could, there's some parallels. You could see this today in the United States. Or for, like all these, I remember, even on the Republican side, so it's, it's kind of apolitical. We joined the college Republicans. Hey, we need you to go and knock on doors and head off flyers. Well, yeah, we talk to here about economics, philosophy. No, 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 go here and help out this candidate. You were free labor. And you think, well, maybe someday, I know a couple people, like, maybe someday I'll get to run for, 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 for Senate. Some, someday I'll, I'll be able to work on the staff of, of, you know, Congressman Johnson or whatever. No, no. That was going to go to their connections, their cronies, and you guys are just free fucking labor. You were fucking tools. And so this betrayal, that is, that is another, what is it, belignment? It exposes communism for what it really is. They will turn on their own fucking people because they're fucking mafia. They're fucking, not good Italian mafia that might actually be a quasi-government thing and issue some law and order with a bit of morals and principles. This is your rank and file communist fucks, these parasites, that will, they will sell in their own mother to get themselves ahead. Because that's how much, they're, how much they're afraid, deathly afraid of real work. And so it was particularly interesting to see the devout communists become subject to their own evil entity, uh, this, this empire that they supported. Um, and then, uh, ba, 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 so that's what it is. And then finally about the gulag system itself, it, it's just, I mean, what else do you say about it? It's a despicable human rights violation. Uh, and I alluded to this before. I don't think right, right is, if we wanted to punish leftists, we just leave them alone because they can't survive without us. They need our constant economic production to live, it, it, be it a, an outright welfare parasite or make work government academians or nonprofits who live off of government grants. We would just cut that off. They, they die. There would be, I, it's not like, yeah, I want to grab them and put them in a prison and punish them. The left, this communist, it shows you this ego aspect, this truly evil thing. Like, right as we just leave left, it's like, yeah, go on your island and do whatever the fuck you want. We don't care. We're going to live on. We got other shit too. We're superior people. <clears throat> Leftists, they cannot exist. They do not exist. Communists do not exist without other entities, uh, without a host. I don't mean that in an economic sense, but I mean that even in a philosophical sense, they cannot exist. Like, what do they pride themselves off of? That they're not a, a white male cisgendered Christian rat bastard with a job. They're not that guy. Well, okay, but what do you do? Another perfect way to ask this question to kind of highlight the patheticness of leftism in general, but communism in particular, is they describe yourself. Tell me about yourself. A leftist will <laughs> default to their gender, their race, their ideology, or their religion. Those are worthless people. You ask, we go have a beer, right? Let's just say you and I go have a beer. Clary, tell me about yourself. I'm going to tell you traits, not, not things I was born with, but things I've done, hobbies. Oh, well, I like motorcycle riding. That has nothing to do with this skin color or my massive unit down below, which thankfully you'd be like, oh my God, we have to back up. Uh, but on a serious note, you know, think about this and be honest. Say, someone would ask you a question, hey, describe yourself. You're on a date, whatever. You'll talk about your job. Uh, maybe, talk, and maybe it's not a date, you know, oh, I got kids, I have a, I'm a father of three, I'm a mother of two. Um, I like, you know, me, you know, I like mountain biking or mountain climbing, I like hiking, I like adventuring, I like fossils. None of this has to do with my political beliefs. I don't lead off, I'm a libertarian, 
I don't eat, no matter how passionate I be about I don't leave, I'm a white male and I'm proud. I, I got more important shit going on in my life to worry about what skin color happens to encapsulate this wonderfully incredible brain and this massive unit down below. It just, it doesn't, I mean, really think about it. Like the first thing, and, and you watch, there's people out there, like, hey, describe yourself. I'm a black female and I, oh, fuck you, goodbye, goodbye. You didn't achieve anything being a black female. You didn't achieve anything being female. That is completely out of your control. That was by chance, the gen genitalia, and then it was only a byproduct of who fucked and, and inbred, or, or bred, rather, or, uh, fornicated. So <clears throat> when, it, when it comes to these leftists cannot exist without being defined by rightist producers or just neutrals, just people who like, and then they gotta like, you're sexist, you're a global warming denier, and because they are so lazy, so pathetic, so sad, so evil, so pathetic, so, so, I can't even come up with the words, they're the worst, they are the worst things in the world. Um, they hate you, they envy you, and so their entire existence is the fact that they're not you and you're evil, by the way. Because I'm a white male and I was born with a massive unit and I happen to have this color skin. I have institutional privilege, all these other made up cardinal original sins that they just pulled fresh out of their asses. Uh, so they hate you. And I hate to get into too much psychological issues. Um, their hatred is driven by their fear of real work and laziness and their ego. They're not going to go become engineers. They're not going to become doctors. Again, look at the Khmer Rouge, predominantly lazy fucking spoiled brat, upper middle class or higher, most of the communists as well, <clears throat> um, teachers, uh, but most communists, they're, they're weak, soft, pathetic egomaniacs. And they want, above all else, to avoid work. And they will find, and they will rewire their own brain to find any reason to avoid working, and they will hate you for it. They will hate you because in their mind, and, and some brainwashing too, some of these kids just, just go, they don't even have to come from upper middle classes. They go, oh, why he's out to get you? Oh, it's, it's the patriarchy. Oh, it's capital. Oh, it's the corporations, man. And now, I mean, the millennials are a perfect example of sheep. Holy fucking shit. Those are, yeah, it's fucking blow away. Take it down. Man, and that. It's like, are you going to work? Because if you work, then I'd actually believe you. But you don't pay taxes. You still live in a home at 27. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, these people will put you in a cop. They want you to be punished because they have nothing else in life. The, the, again, the rightists are just left us be alone. I got my own shit going on. I, am, I have value unto myself. I have trin intrinsic value. Left us don't. They need an enemy so that they have value because without an enemy, them on their own, and they would have to assess themselves, like they can't look at skin color or, or a massive unit down below, then all of a sudden the reality is like, yeah, you're just a lazy, talentless. I mean, you could be talentful. You could have lots of promise of potential, but you're a lazy fuck. <clears throat> and they don't want to face that. So they're more than happy to kill millions, hundreds of millions. Accuse people of sins they're not guilty of. Racism, sexism, isms, and this, and privilege. Blah, 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 just so they can have their crusade. And in the end, they will gladly kill you. They will gladly put you in a concentration camp. I mean, look at Antifa. They will gladly... Uh, you know, violate people's right to the freedom of speech. So <clears throat> there's this ego aspect of the gulag system where it has to be punished. Political prison, you must be punished. It's not like, okay, you murdered somebody who raped a child. No, there's an ego there. We gotta crush this, this political movement. Or we gotta crush people who have different political views. And so you see that kind of online in doxing in a soft sense through ostracization and trying to ruin people's careers. Um, but in a blunt communist system where there's no other parties to be elected, there's no freedom, there's no democracy, uh, yeah, they'll just use the military and fucking put you in a, put you in a gulag. Okay, the next one. <clears throat> uh, my question is, what are your thoughts on the Gulag Archipelago book? I, I don't know, I mean, it's good. I, I don't know what else can be said about it. It was necessary. Um, I know Dr. Jordan Peterson Fix it was one of the most influential books in the 20th century. And it was, it was. Um, it highlighted and exposed the Soviet Union for the dark underside. Not this fake Potemkin village, look it up. Like, hey, look at us, come visit us. You know, like when uh, 
Then his fuckface Rodman goes and visits Kim Jong Un. You think he's gonna show him the prisoner camps or the shit? No, he's gonna show him the nice shit. Or was it the dictator? The two potheads, um, James Franco, who could have been a great actor. Watch the Great Raid with James Franco. It's like he did that, and then he's just a pothead after. Um, Seth Rogen. That's the other fucking Gen X. <laughs> Can't. Um, that's exactly what they, hey, look how great and wonderful everything is. And meanwhile, like, people are starving, their growth is stunted. Um, these people don't even have the cons. I mean, how many generations of North Koreans have just been wasted? One could also say how many generations of people in the black community that have lined up on the Democrat plantation, how many of their freedoms, their lives are completely wasted, just sitting there collecting a government check and blaming everything on Whitey. It, 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 boy, communism is just a, just a horrible, just... Even if they don't outright kill you, they'll ruin your life. They'll waste your life. Think of all the Soviets and the Russians for the 70 odd years that's communism from 1918 to 1989, 1991. How many, how many people's lives were ruined? Uh, because they believed a leftist religious lie. Uh, but in any case, so the Archipelago book, uh, Archipelago, uh, Gul Gul Archipelago Gulag, that book, not that the United States didn't know, not that the CIA that we didn't know that something like, hey, something's going wrong with it. But this one was like a, a report that came from it itself. And you're like, holy shit, you're just as bad as we thought we were. And the good news is he won the Nobel Peace Prize for it. Uh, it which is a little bit of hope because there's leftists and academians who live in this, this very lucky, luxurious, uh, free world in the West. And they could espouse, you should just take everybody's money because I'm a spoiled little cunt from the suburbs and I got a doctorate in some worthless thing that doesn't require math and is rigor avoidance studies. Um, but then all of a sudden, you know, and we've seen a little bit of this with Evergreen and, and Dr. Jordan Peterson himself, where he's like, no, I'm not calling you Zer or Zer or any of that other fucking shit. It's he or she and you can present yourself how you want. <clears throat> we start to see even academia and some of the traditional established leftists start to draw the line. Um, so, the Nobel Prize being awarded, even the, quote, you can't call them intelli intellectual class, they're, they're fucking, they're not intelligent, they're just sheep, uh, but quote, the intelligentsia, uh, the academians, uh, the leftists, even they're like, whoa, this is wrong, we want, fr okay, we want free everything, happy, happy, joy, joy, and let's not act out happy, like, ah, just free everything, whoa, you're killing people and putting them in, at least, it, it showed like, wow, okay, leftists do have a line, like Lou Dobbs, um, even even people on CNN were like, wait a minute, Antifa's denying people the right to speak? Well, hold on. I mean, it's like, oh, good, you do have a soul. You guys do have, like, you do have a line that can be crossed. Good to know. Thank you. <laughs> You're a bit humane. Uh, but, what do you mean, yeah, what do you mean, the book was good, it was necessary. I'm glad he wrote it. I'm not going to read 2,100 pages. Uh, but it, it, it's nice that it came out. Okay. What are your thoughts on, uh, what are your thoughts on Jordan's claims? Uh, I think, we think they're 100% correct. I don't know what else. Again, it, uh, he, along the same lines as I was saying before, him being an academia, was it Bernstein? the guy in Evergreen, even people in CNN, I think that uh, his claims that, hey, this is an expose, this highlights and reports back empirically what communism leads to as being important, absolutely, is 100% correct. <clears throat> but I also like the fact that even academians, even slow drama McGraw Peterson, whoa, hang on now, I gotta put another bullet in my shit, oh, here we go, Bernie Fife, I'm a hero! You mean, sad and pathetic and 20 years too late to the party like Powell and Die Hard. You know, all right, at least he's here. And it's good to see that the established, or at least the old guard, the baby boomer, left his hippy-dippy morons. Uh, they, they're like, whoa, hey, yeah, this is bad. This is, this is an expose. I don't think anyone, even on the left, Almost particularly evil, particularly despicable, particularly ideological for communists. I think they were like, no, even Khrushchev, for God's sake, said, all right, wait, well, this cult of personality thing is going to end. We're not doing this Stalin thing, um, which inevitably, and 
links to Gorbachev or Andropov and then Gorbachev, but um, even the communist, the head, start realizing, yeah, there's some evil shit going on here. We might might want to stop this. <clears throat> um, so I, it, it, it certainly was one of the most influential books of the 20th century. I wouldn't say it is today because no one's reading it. Um, they were pointing out that Russian high school students are forced to read it. Uh, American and Western kids aren't because, well, one, it would take too much effort and work, and we don't want to <clears throat> make you with a precious little girls and boys from the suburbs and the ghetto and the trailer park and the barrio. We don't want you guys to work too hard. Hell no. You guys are just so smart and intelligent. So we don't force them to read it. <clears throat> um, but uh, I don't think it's going to have quite the effect that it did in the 20th century that it will have um, in the 21st because kids are... They're dumb. They're watching this stupid... I mean, I was over at the bar today because Vegas has 24-7 bars and I'm watching them doing work. And it's all NFL shit. I'm like, dude, it's 7.30 in the morning. Really? We're going to talk about fucking sports? But, but that's how dumb the average American is. And they deserve... We deserve... I'm, I'm more and more convinced every day we deserve to collapse. Everyone's like, oh my God, America's going to go... I'm like, D dude, this is not 1950s World War II vets Juno War Cleaver raising a nuclear family with respectable, well-grounded children. The country's a bunch of fuck-ups. It, it, it does deserve what it's getting. It absolutely does deserve. Uh, anyway, um, his, his claims are correct, but it's, it's you know, like, you should eat your broccoli. Well, how many people actually eat the broccoli? You should work out and, and diet, okay? How many people actually do it? Uh, Americans are just and Westerners in general are just pathetic, sad creatures, and they'll, they'll inevitably create the environment that something like this can happen again. Uh, do you think that it is possible it can happen today? And yes, but in two ways. Uh, one would be the Overton's window, where it actually would, we would have gulags again, we'd have communists and communism, and the sheep wouldn't know any better. We're America, we're capitalists. Even though our government takes 40% of GDP and corporate tax rates are 40%, yeah, we're capitalists. Oh, it's all uh, capital. We bail out banks, that's capitalism. Government bailing out banks is capitalism. Is it now? Did you just hear what you fucking said? Yeah, it's capitalism. Anyway, so as uh, Overton's window, meaning um, like right now, you know, let's say go back to the 1950s and they say, we're going to take away, you know, machine guns, and all these vets came back from the world to the fuck you are, that's how we fucking fought off the fucking Nazis. So we're fucking fighting off the communists over in China. We're not saying, oh, well, but in 1970, we finally got rid of machine guns. And all of a sudden now, California, well, you can only have four bullets. It has to be loaded a certain way. So what would seem preposterous or impossible, <clears throat> letting third worlders in, yeah, because uh, they just totally want to be Americans like us and not live off the government. Um, what seemed impossible 50 years ago was like, oh my god, that was so 20 years ago. Um, so Overton's window is a slow encroachment <clears throat> as not only society changes, but you get them brainwashed, that they'll accept things more and more and more. And so what I think with Overton's window, what will happen, and you can kind of see this with the millennials, I'm very curious to see how Gen, Gen Z will turn out. Um, but the millennials, like, just imagine, you know, the millennials don't mature, they don't grow up, they don't wake the fuck up. And Gen Z is just as brainwashed as the millennials. And Gen X, you know, let's say they become the next boomers. <clears throat> also, you got two-thirds of a country. I mean, you think, how dumb is this sound? How dumb of a country does this sound? Two-thirds of your population isn't as smart as Gen X. Gen X ain't smart. They're fucking sheep. They're dumb as fuck. They're immoral as fuck. I know you guys think I hate the boomers. I do. But I hate Gen X more because I had to deal with them. I am them. Um... So as the population change, we have more immigrants, more illegal aliens, more cultures and, and, and people. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with them, they're just, their culture is not going to jive with American traditionalism and Western civilization and culture. Soon, you're not going to have a capitalist, rugged, individualistic Western civilization. You're going to go back to fucking 500 years ago, or, or today, we're going to go to South, you're going to become Brazil, you're going to become this boring, rank of file, shitty ass, not mentionable second world country. And so then, by the time it slowly moves away, hey, you know, and you get enough doctrine, you brainwash enough kids, and that's exactly what the K through 12 institutions do, and colleges, you can get a group of people to say, hey, wait a minute, uh, we should punish these people. We, for example, you can see sprouts of the, this already happening with um, 
global warming deniers. People want to punish people who deny global warming. There are people who want to put you in jail and punish you. <laughs> they want to make it criminal to not think that there's global warming. Now, you could say whether or not there is, <clears throat> but how is that any different than you must believe in Jesus? Oh, we're going to burn you at the stake in the Inquisition. Uh, so I can see, you don't see it now, but uh, imagine another 50 years go by and these social justice warriors who are fucking psycho, also now they're in charge, of, now they're in the government, now they're in Congress, and there's enough of them that they can actually pass laws. And the, for example, uh, if you remember the, uh, I, was, I was like, okay, there's hope. Again, you see like, wow, there is some thought. You do have a soul. Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Keegan, uh, they were talking about the Supreme Court case of the slants and the slants is uh, this guy he's Asian and he wanted to trademark the name the slants and he said you can't do that because uh, it was rejected because it's derogatory and the trademark office I think it was had some rules that you can't be disparaging and then it became a free speech issue and even Keegan and Ruth Bader Ginsburg and what is the Latina I think the Latina was against it but it's like what, what right is this of ours I'm like holy shit you broads actually fucking really? You think there's a free speech? There is, okay, nice to hear. They're not gonna be around in 50 years. And they're just like that much on the side of freedom. Now what happens when you get some social, you know, today, your most ardent, hate-filled feminist, she goes because she can't find a real job, she goes to law school. And then she goes work for some nonprofit, doesn't really work a real job, and then she runs for Congress, or not Congress, uh, <coughs> And gets nominated by somebody for Supreme Court justice. Now all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, we should punish people who uh, don't believe in global warming. We should punish people who, who uh, say certain things. You should pay a tax because of your skin color and your gender and your, your sexual preference. And so that's what can happen in 50 years. So is that, yes, it can happen. Uh, what I think is going to be more likely, because I don't think the internet will allow for that, I think there's enough freedom, there's enough cameras, frankly, there's, there's enough people saying, no, here's the line, you know, you call it the alt-right or the, the red pill or whatever, at least it anchors it back to like, say, 1950, like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't care what, you, you could call us radicals, you could call us whatever. We're going to have 10% taxes, people are allowed to have machine guns, and uh, they can name that thing the slants, if they want. Uh, so. Well, I think it's going to be more common as what we already have today, and that is a hive-like mentality. There's no mother brain orchestrating it, but like a very Borg-like where they just all know to attack a particular person. We're going to dox this person. We're going to contact their employers, the Brendan Ikes. You know, Mozilla's going to fire because you made a donation. I think it was like you made a donation for the traditional marriage fund back in, in California. I mean, something pretty innocuous. Like, okay, I can understand. I disagree. I think gay should have the right to get married, but you have the right to donate. I wouldn't fire him for it. Again, rightists don't care to punish. Uh, but uh, this, this unofficial, unsanctioned, non-sanctioned, but very real, we're going to punish you via social media, the internet. I think that's going to be kind of a soft Gulag Archipelago. Where you are ostracized, or it's harder for you to get a job, or you uh, can't work in the government. I mean, you already see that to a certain extent right now. Like, honestly, there's no reason for white males, I'd say males in general, uh, to go and apply for any large city police department. Um, why? Why would you? You're not going to get promoted based on uh, merit. Uh, you, if you shoot somebody uh, and it happens to not be a white person, Heck, I mean, if, you know, that Muhammad Noor guy, he shot a white gal, and now he's, he's in hot water, and it, we'll find out. But the point is, <clears throat> um, there, this punishment has already come about in various aspects of our society and government and, and law, certainly academia. How many of you boys have been falsely accused of rape and all of a sudden the fourth branch of government called academia says, you better, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a court. Like, are you are you a fucking cop? Are you a fucking judge? Go fuck yourself. And the only reason they can be a fourth branch of government is because they could kick you out. And because college is everything. So you already see this this kind of happening um, in policy, but when it comes to actual action, no one really I don't think people are gonna put a gun to your head. But they're going to like, we're going to find out where you live, we're going to find out who your, your daughters are, we're going to find out who your employers are, we're going to expose you, and they will go out there and do that. 
Um, it's not as bad as being sent to 30 years hard labor and you die on the 15th year because of lack of food or, or warmth. Um, but th those are the two ways I see it happen. Either in Overton's window where also we wake up one day and we're communists because women just can't get enough fucking Democrat dick and government check. Oh, I got for the children, for the children, for the children. What do you mean 100% taxes? But my husband, he didn't say that. For the children, for the children. Communism for the children. So it will either be through stupid, ignorant naivete, or it will be a soft, unspoken, hive board like mind where we gotta get that guy, we gotta get that girl, we gotta, yeah, like, they said that, they said that. Um, also, do you think? This is even a relevant question to say. It is, it is, because it's, what do they say? History doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. We're not, I don't think we're actually going to have, like, yeah, Aaron, what do you think? I think there's a 30, 35% chance we're going to have concentration camps. Um, <clears throat> I think what is more likely is going to be a quasi new thing that evolves. Like, it, it's a sickness, it's a disease that has never happened in history before. Um, it's going to have elements of a gulag archipelago or a a concentration camp. There's going to be elements of the Inquisition. There's going to be elements of witch hunts. So there'll be other things that, but I think there'll just be this, what would we call it? Popular kid, middle school, psycho bullshit. Like the emperor has no clothes kind of thing where you all better toe the line on global warming and feminism and diversity and all that. And, uh, and if you don't, well, then we're going to punish you. And how do we punish you? Well, quotas, public humiliation, Expose friends, you can't even call them friends, but people just, oh, you're a racist. It's like, why? Because I hold blacks up to the same standards of whites? Because I want women to actually close the wage gap? You, you, you're going to hurt their feet. It's going to be a bizarro world. And I think that is probably the modern day gulag archipelago, is one of mental insanity, uh, where you cannot simply speak the truth. No matter how much it would help people or advance society, like, you cannot speak the truth because you must toe this line. If you don't, if you're not for donating to the United Way at work, look that up. The United Way comes in and says, you should donate to us. And if you don't, oh, are you tisk 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 over at the corporation that you're working for? You better go to diversity council. You better go to uh, uh, sexual harassment training. You better go to this. You better go to that. And it's like, uh, no, fuck you. No, but you, you have to. And this is the real price that humanity pays. This is why I stopped paying attention to the news because I can't, I can't stand or tolerate anymore the insanity, be it in academia where kids are not allowing people to have the freedom of speech, be it um, just what really angers me is the stupid, you look at Congress, congressmen or congresswomen, they just look at how stupid they are. There was that one guy who <clears throat> want to know if we put more Marines on Guam if the island would sink. I mean, you're just like, oh my God. Who are, and it's not, okay, I understand he's an idiot, but you fucking idiots that voted in that guy. Who the, why do you have the right to vote and not me? I, 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 why does your vote count as much as mine? <laughs> what? Um, it, that, that, it's, that is the real price. Uh, and fake news, this is real, this is fake, this is spin so much. You have no idea what's going on. That's, that's the real cost of the price. As taxes slowly increment higher, and as the national debt gets super higher, it doesn't increment, like it's, it gets higher a lot quicker. Um, that, that is why a book like The Gulag Archipelago would be relevant so that you could maybe wake people up a little bit, saying, hey, this is kind of the path we're going down. It's where economics also helps where you can like actually measure. I like government spending as a percentage of GDP. That's the measure of communism or socialism or capitalism. But hey, how much do we want? What percentage of your of your check would you like the government to take? What percent? Well, what would you feel for the children? Um, so the Gulag Archipelago is relevant. It will highlight like the worst possible outcome of a communist system. There are lessons to draw from it. But unfortunately, I think it's too damn long, and I think Americans are too damn lazy. Even I'm not gonna read it. I know it, because I've studied enough history, and I know enough economics, so I'm not ignorant in that way. I don't need to read 2,100 pages, you know, the communists, a country headed up by a bunch of lazy fucks that eliminate private property, won't result in a booming economy. I don't need to go read a 2,100 page book for that. Um, and even if it would benefit people to read it, and we force kids to read it, 
<clears throat> it's not going to happen. We're not going to force kids to read because teachers just have no incentive. The public school has no incentive to warn young children about communism or to make them independent thinkers. Um, so it's it. I think it would fall on deaf ears today. I think short bits like Dr. Jordan Peterson's putting together the internet, the YouTube's, uh, shorter books, um, just discussion the internet in general will slow it down, or hopefully prevent it from ever happening again. Uh, but I, I, I would say yes, philosophically, technically it is relevant, but no one's going to digest that. No one's going to read it. No one's going to take it in. It's like reading Ayn Rand, like, oh my God, and when you read Ayn Rand, you'd like her. I'm like, I don't have a life expectancy. Like if there was a shorter version or maybe a movie that was made out of it, cool. <clears throat> but you're not dealing with smart people, patient people, or, or intelligent people. You're dealing with sheep, and it's got to be short and quick and stupid, like the movie in Idiocracy. It's going to be President Camacho with a gun in the House of Representatives, which is a fucking great movie, by the way. All right, hope that helped out. Uh, would I recommend reading it? No. I think most of my audience, you guys know the content. It's not like you need to... To read it. Um, I would watch, even though I give him a lot of shit, I would watch Dr. Jordan Peterson's videos on it. He, he does good. He just, he's a little long-winded. Okay, he's very long-winded. Him and Anne Rand could have very long, boring conversations. Like, you got a fucking point. Uh, but do wa watch some of his stuff. I mean, he's, he's the one guy in academia who had the balls to tell these people to fuck off. Uh, but in general, yeah, no, the, the Gulag Archipelago, I don't think it'll come back but I think it is here in an alternative form, maybe not as blunt or black and white, uh, but it is definitely here in, in, a, in a soft, underhanded, cowardly doxing type of form. And I think that will only increase as time goes on and future generations of kids are brainwashed. Hey, like, corporate social responsibility, diversity, yay, I care about the environment, feminism. I mean, once. That religion is <clears throat> until the Republicans get some balls and actually attack the K through 12 system and start attacking teachers from the evil vile scum they are. This is not going to change. All right, that's all we got. You guys got questions? Go to assholeconsulting.com. Contact the old captain. I got my books. They're available on Amazon.com. You can find them for affordable, and they're shorter than the Gulag Archipelago. I'll tell you that. A little bit more precise and concise, uh, succinct. Uh, and then we got the Clary Podcast, which you can tune into on SoundCloud. We'll see you guys later. Tools.